We're going to be back in the book of Ecclesiastes. This is going to be Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And we're going to look at the subject of how will you die. Ecclesiastes 2.14 The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. One event happeneth to them all. That event is death. How will you die? No matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter your gender, your age, your income, your IQ, or any other detail about you, you're still going to die. Because death is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The only way that you won't die is if you're saved and the rapture happens before you do. But with this in mind, let's go through Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and focus on the question of how will you die? First, will you die in pleasure? Ecclesiastes 2, one and verse 2, I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? Many people seek happiness by trying to do what their heart desires. Solomon said, I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. He's trying to get happiness here by enjoying pleasure. Especially today, all you see is pleasure seekers. Because 1 Timothy 5, 6 says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. 2 Timothy 3, 4 calls people in the last days lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. But Hebrews eleven twenty five describes pleasures as only lasting for a season. Worldly pleasures bring temporary happiness at best, and they do not fulfill. The average person may seek pleasure through fornication for a while, but that is much less fulfilling than a faithful marriage between two people. A good moral person may seek happiness through the pleasure of a faithful marriage, but this is much less fulfilling than a godly marriage between two Christian people. The closer you get to God, the more you will be fulfilled. The more you bring God into a thing, the more worthwhile it becomes. He said, I said in mine heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. Pleasures of this life are vanity. The pleasure of fornication only lasts while in the moment, and the consequences of the sin aren't worth it. Pleasure through drugs or alcohol aren't worth the consequences they bring. I know drug addicts and drunks who look back at all the fake, fun times and say, what was the point of all of it? It was all so vain. It was all stupid. And now I'm in this horrible mess that I'm in. Verse 2, I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? Most of the laughter you hear is from dirty jokes, filthy language, and nonsense. You see, laughter is good because Proverbs 17:22 says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. But these people that you think are happy and living in pleasure, just like somebody like Robin Williams was. It was just a big lie. He made a living making people laugh, and yet he was deeply depressed. The same goes for men like Jim Carrey. All of these comedians, they're very depressed. But how will you die in this same type of fake pleasure? Many people die in fake pleasure. The rapper Juice World was 21 years old when he died living in sinful pleasure and i know people personally that died living in pleasure and they were dead while they were living walking zombies they go around looking for ways to satisfy the flesh and then in ecclesiastes chapter 2 look down at verses 10 and 11 it says and whatsoever mine eyes desired i kept not from them i withheld not my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced in all my labor and this was my portion of all my labor. You see, the rich men in this country can have almost anything their heart desires. You take these young athletes, for example. They are not only extremely rich, but they are also extremely famous. And when you have both of those things together, the temptation is amped up because 1 Timothy 6, 9 says, But they that will be rich 
fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Solomon said, And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. That's the situation they're in. They can have anything that they want. And they withhold not their heart from any joy. For he said, For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. You see, these young athletes, people like that, they can get as much alcohol as they want, as much pot as they want. They can get as much, uh, as many women as they want, as many Instagram models as they want. They can get all that they want. But how will you die? In pleasure? Verse 11 says, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Solomon had it all. He had all the money. He had a thousand women, and probably even more than his in, in his entire lifespan than that. He not only had women of his kind, but also strange women. When it was all said and done, Solomon looked around at all his labor and what his hands had wrought, and he said, There is no profit under the sun. How will you die? In pleasure? It's easy to die in worldly pleasure. There is also a joy that God can put in your heart while you're on this earth that fulfills, and you'll actually be much happier than people who live for pleasuring the flesh. The pleasure from God is not vanity. Psalm 37, 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. This is the new heart, the heart you have after salvation, when you're desiring to live for God. He can give you the desire of your new heart, and you'll be fulfilled in him. The Bible gives me much more pleasure than the lost world ever gave me, because I know that it's real. I know that it's true. So how will you die? In pleasure? How will you die? In drunkenness? Will you die in drunkenness? Ecclesiastes 2.3 I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. The Lord allowed Solomon to retain his wisdom while living out the desires of the flesh. He gave himself unto wine. Imagine if you gave yourself to alcoholic wine. Many people do. It starts out fun, but it ends up badly. Do you want to risk your marriage, your job, your children, and your fellowship with the Lord because of alcohol? Alcohol is so bad because you can give yourself to it. You think you're in control, and then it's in control of you. I know personally people who died in drunkenness. My biological father died in drunkenness. He never even got to see his grandkids. He missed out on the joys of life that are from the Lord. He forfeited all for that pleasure that he got from being a drunk. How will you die? In pleasures and the pleasures of drunkenness? Or how will you die? Will you die on the job? Ecclesiastes 2, 4 says, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. You hear about rich people having a house in New York. Then they also have a house on the beach in Florida, then a house in the mountains, then a house in California, and maybe even one in another country. Solomon could have as many houses as he wanted. One of his houses took 13 years to build it. He made great works. He planted vineyards. He said, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kind of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. Solomon made pools of waters. He probably had jacuzzis and hot tubs and water slides, and he probably had so many different kinds of pools and waters that we haven't even heard of. Solomon was not lazy. He accomplished a lot. Many people today are busy. They're accomplishing a lot, but they are so busy that they dedicate their whole life to their career. They forget about God. They forget about the Bible. They forget about the family. How will you die? On the job? Some people wake up and they are retired, but wasted their young life focused on nothing but their job so much that they don't have anything. They don't even have anything to do with that job anymore, yet that's what their mind is still on. And they don't have any wisdom about anything else to pass on to a younger generation. 
Verse 7, I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle, above all that were in Jerusalem before me. Solomon could have someone to take care of every room in his house if he wanted. He could have hired a full-time backscratcher. He had more cattle than anyone before him. He could have had all he could have all kinds of steak, build a Wendy's inside his house, and live on Dave's doubles every day. Uh, you can get a lot of material items and temporal things if you work a lot, but you never get that time back. I never volunteer for overtime. The only overtime I work is the hours, uh, you know, that they make me come in. The extra hours they make me come in is the only time that I work overtime. I never do voluntary overtime. Forty hours is enough. Recently, they've mostly been making me work about 50 hours a week, which isn't bad compared to a lot of people. But I'd rather be with my family those extra 10 hours. I'd rather be able to have that extra time doing something else don't get to the point in your life when you have to work 20 hours of overtime to make it. You know, you don't want to be these people that don't want to work, period. But you don't want to be somebody who just works all the time and doesn't focus on anything else. How will you die? Will your kids' memories of you be with you at work when you've already passed on? Ecclesiastes 2.18, Yeah, I hated all my labor, which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. All the stuff you're buying will just be left to the next man, and who knows what he is going to do with it. It makes you hate it because it's all so vain. You can't keep it. You can't take it with you. Someone may get everything you have, and he may be a complete idiot. Verse 19, And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool, the person that gets all your stuff? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. I know people who have died and their kids got their house and their stuff and their, you know, their business. They sold it. They spent the money on drugs. And now they're broke again. All the work that their parents did is gone. Nothing to show for it. Their kids aren't living any better because of it. It was all so vain. Now it's all down the drain. Verse 20, Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. How will you die? Some people die having everything and wake up in hell with nothing. And one day they're being pampered the next day they're waking up in hell how will you die will you die in luxury verse 8 says i gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces i got me men singers and women singers and that lots of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts he had silver he had gold he had the peculiar treasure of kings I bet he had expensive paintings and cool swords and all kinds of stuff. It would just be cool to walk through one of his mansions like it was the Biltmore House tour or something. I bet he had trap doors and hidden rooms and tunnels in his house. He said, I got me men singers and women singers. He could get all the most successful musicians of his day and have a concert with them in his backyard anytime he wanted. Not only was he rich, but he was also the king. He was also famous. He lived in luxury. His chariot probably had air conditioning. It probably had heated seats. Or he could have hired somebody to sit in a car, sit in the chariot for him about an hour so the seats would be nice and toasty for him when he got in it. Uh, rich people die every day. Not many of them glorify God. Not many of them get saved to begin with. Matthew 19, 24 says, And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. How will you die? In luxury, without God, how will you die? Will you die on the top? Will you die on the top of your field? When Kobe died, you had people saying he was the greatest to play basketball outside of Michael Jordan. Yet he died at a young age. And he couldn't take worldly success with him to the grave. He may have died on the top, but he couldn't take it with him. Michael Jackson is referred to as the king of pop. He died. He couldn't take any of that with him to hell. 
So how will you die? Will you die on the top, on the top of your game? Solomon says in verse 9, So I was great and increased more and more, and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Solomon says, I was great. Easily the most famous celebrity in the world. He increased in everything above everyone, but yet retained his wisdom. Verse 12 says, And I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which hath been already done? Solomon was on the top. Nobody could do anything after him that he didn't already do. He done did everything, saw everything, bought everything you could have. He said, I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. He was above all that were in Jerusalem. He got stuff above everybody. How will you die? Will you die on the top? I heard Kobe, I heard Kobe Bryant said that he wanted to be better than Michael Jordan and then die young. What's the point? You can die on the top. And if you're not saved, you're going to drop all the way down to the bottom. How will you die? Will you die in the dark? Verse 13 and 14. Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. The fool walks around in the dark because he hates the light. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. John 3, 20, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. John 3, 19, And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You don't want to die in darkness. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe that believe not. They are in darkness. If you die in darkness, then you'll wake up in darkness. 13 and 14, Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly, as far as light excelleth darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happeneth to them all. The wise man may die just like a fool does, but at least he dies in wisdom. His eyes are in his head. The foolish man's eyes are wherever he can find pleasure. That's why you don't want to follow the fool. If the blind lead the blind, then they both fall into a ditch. So how will you die? In foolishness and in darkness? Or how will you die? Will you die in wisdom? Verse 15. Then said I in my heart, as it happeneth to the fool... So it happeneth even to me. And why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. Solomon is thinking if I'm so wise and I'm going to die like the fool, then what's the point of being wise? So he says this is also vanity. However, remember Solomon is approaching this topic from the standpoint of looking at the life, at this life only, under the sun and not the world to come. He's not looking at things up above with eternity in mind. Consider the wicked men today who have the wisdom of the world. They may have all the money and possessions, but they will die just like the bum on the street. This is why they are seeking eternal life through technology. And back a long time ago, they wanted to freeze their bodies after they died so that they might could be brought back to life when new technology comes along that could do such a thing. But the wise and the rich men died just like a poor man or a fool. And verse 16 says, For there is no remembrance of the wise man more than the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how died the wise man as the fool? There have been great preachers that no one has ever even heard of. Their voice wasn't recorded on a cassette. They never got to publish a book. Even though they live for the Lord, when it comes to this world, they're forgotten. But the Lord remembered. There are musicians from days gone by who nobody even knows about. Actors, actresses, and athletes are forgotten. From the rich to the poor, from the great to the small, they're forgotten. And Solomon says in verse 17, Therefore I hated life because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me, for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Solomon hated life because if in this life only we have hope, we are miserable. 
If this life was all there was, then it's all meaningless. But there is a world to come, and it does matter what we do with this life. Verse 21, For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom, and in knowledge, and in equity. Yet to a man that hath not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion. This also is vanity and a great evil. There are people who labor. Their labor is in wisdom, knowledge, and equity. Their labor is meaningful and worthwhile. Yet all they work for is left to someone who didn't work for it. Someone who's not going to appreciate it. Someone who may let it all go to shambles. It's all vanity. For what hath man of all his labor and of the vexation of his heart wherein he hath labored under the sun? The richest man who ever lived asked this question. This proves money cannot buy happiness. It cannot buy fulfillment. But will you die in wisdom? There are men with worldly wisdom. They have this life only to look forward to. They will die in worldly wisdom, but there is a wisdom from above. How will you die? In the wisdom above? If so, then you die in Jesus Christ. Wisdom from above leads you to the Lord Jesus Christ, who makes your labor not in vain. He makes things worthwhile. He makes things have meaning. He makes everlasting benefits for your work. Or how will you die? Will you die in wisdom from above or in restlessness? Ecclesiastes 2.13 For all his days are sorrows and his travail grief, yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. Solomon had so much money and possessions that he couldn't even sleep at night. It gave him insomnia. You know, he could go down and buy any sleep pill he wanted. He still couldn't sleep. He could have instrumental bands play soothing music to put him to sleep, and he was still staring at the ceiling at night, tossing and turning. Is that how you die in restlessness? Will you die eating, drinking, and being merry? Verse 24 and 25 says, There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. For who can eat, or who else can hasten hereunto more than I? You know, if, you, if God's gave you plenty of food, plenty to drink and you're living a happy life and you're saved what more could you ask for you may not have all that solomon had but i mean <clears throat> that's all you need god's given you more than you need and if all he gave you was the lord jesus christ then that's all you need but how will you die will you die eating drinking and being merry without god there's a lot of people doing that without god and they're going to wake up in hell. They went from a pampered life to eternal fire. Are you going to die as a sinner? Ecclesiastes 2.26 For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail to gather and to heap up. That he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Are you going to die as a sinner? You don't have to die in your sins. The Bible is clear how to get out of your sins. Paul gave us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, where he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He shed his blood. He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. He paid the payment for your sin. You, All them sins you committed, you owe a debt that you cannot pay. But Jesus paid the debt. You just have to accept the payment. If you come to Jesus Christ right now, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be saved. You can accept that payment. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on him today before it's too late. How will you die? Will you die as sinner or will you die as saint?